Hey guys, it's Tony here with Maryland and Delaware Herping. Probably wondering why I'm in my room. And that's because it is December in Northeastern Maryland and that is not good for herping. Uh, Northern Delaware, Southeastern PA, all the usual spots I try to hit. It's just too cold. So while, you know, these winter months are passing through, I'm trying to think like, hey, what could we do on this channel? And I said, you know, I've got several pet herps. Maybe I can introduce them on this channel and people that were looking to get into owning herps or maybe get into herping could have a good project to start on. And there's certain pets out there, especially ones that I own, that I think are good beginner pets. I mean, I consider myself probably an intermediate owner because I've been doing this for a few years, but I think that all the stuff I own could qualify as a beginner pet. Maybe some people disagree, but what we're gonna try to do here in these videos since we're appealing to beginners is breaking stuff down into three categories. Every channel has something different, but we're gonna be talking about temperament, feeding, and cost. Those are the three things that most people consider when they're going into something like this. So without wasting any more time, I wanna introduce our pet that we're going to be going over this week. And this is my most recent purchase. This is Dennis. Where's your head, Dennis? Oh. He's a goofball. Now, Dennis is a Western hognose snake. Now, you've probably seen in my other videos, I caught a Eastern hognose snake not far from my house back in, <clears throat> I think it was September. And there's a picture right there. Yeah. And um, they're pretty cool, but they don't make great pets because it's harder to get them on a domesticated diet that's not toads where they've had more success with that with the western hognose snakes and they've also just bred so many different morphs and everything like that with these guys that like i said they just make great pets um this is a anaconda morph you can see he's got that anaconda pattern down the back now i got this one from rick crumrine reptiles in Chambersburg, PA. I'll put a link to his uh, business Facebook page down in the description. He's an excellent breeder and I highly recommend him. He's got that beautiful pattern on the belly too. He's like, yeah, you're showing me off. I feel violated. <clears throat> but uh, so let's break this down into our three categories. We'll start off with temperament. Temperament, I think these guys are awesome. Some people may say, oh, they can get uh, moody and then flare their hoods out and uh you know hiss at you and everything uh that's fine i'd rather a cat hiss at me than bite me you know uh and that's the cool thing about these guys and why i think they make great beginner pets is they don't really bite you out of fear what they will do is you can see with this derpy little nose here that they use to dig stop turning your head you can kind of see it right there yep they'll headbutt you with that and that's a lot better than getting bit because if you have like a boa or a king snake, a lot of times when they're afraid they will bite you. It's not all that extreme. Well, it depends on the size of the snake, but either way, you're not going to die. And you probably won't even have to get stitches or anything. But with these guys, they don't even do that. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. And then they're not real darty when you're handling them. They're not constantly trying to get to the ground. They're not, you know, they're exploring, they're inquisitive, but... You know, they're just being easy, you know, and I think that's good for somebody that's not maybe used to handling snakes. I would definitely hand this to somebody as long as they were responsible if they had never held one before without fear of it biting them or it getting scared. Probably wouldn't hand this to a toddler or a really small child out of safety for the snake because, you know, they're not real huge. So you don't want to squeeze them too hard. That could cause some serious damage to them. But like I said, for temperament, I think they're great. Now, the one thing that may turn some people off is this is technically a venomous species. Now, before you get scared, it's a rear fanged venom. Now, most rear fanged venomous colubrids outside of like the boom slang, which isn't even in America, um, pose no threat. Garter snakes are technically rear fanged venomous. It's really only a big deal if you uh, are there... Um, food in the wild which is toads so if you're a toad yeah hog nose venom 
is a big deal. But if you're a human, even a small human, like a child, it's not that big of a deal, you know? So what do we got now? We have feeding. Again, in the wild, these guys are eating mostly toads and frogs. In captivity, most breeders have got them on a frozen thawed rodent diet. I give him about one hopper mouse, which is a very small mouse, every week, and he does fine with that. So when you're going to purchase one, just make sure you check with the breeder, whether it's at an expo or a pet store from a, just a private breeder in general. Say, hey, have you started him on frozen thawed rodents? If not, then maybe you need to consider somewhere else or just see if maybe they're in the process of doing that. Maybe they haven't fed them yet because it's a new hatchling. But most breeders aren't going to sell you a snake unless they've actually got it fed a meal first. So, you know, you got that going for you. I mean, other than that, like I said, I think they're great feeders. They have a pretty cool feeding response. It's not like other snakes. I know I said like king snakes, milk snakes, boas. They like to strike stuff and act like they're killing it. These guys literally will just come up to the dead rodent and just start swallowing it right there. It's kind of funny. It matches their goofy look. So... <clears throat> That brings us to cost. That's our third category. Now, the snake itself is not that expensive. Um, I mean, depending on the morph and everything, you could pay a lot of money for the snake. But if you just want, you know, a regular, like a Western hog nose you'd see in the wild, I mean, there's very reasonable prices. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now, the enclosure, let me show you what I have him set up in. So this is just a pretty basic setup right here. I've got a 20 gallon aquarium. I got this from Walmart, honestly, for like 30 bucks. And then I got this lid here from PetSmart. I'm holding it down with missioner books, but I know I should have clamps, but hog noses can't climb up and push up that far. If this was a bow, I'd definitely have clamps though. But um, yeah, I've got like a small basic basking light here, not even like a, just a lighting bulb basically from the sit-in. That's his warm hide right there. That's his cool hide, put in a couple fake plants. Just a little basic water dish. And the only thing I probably added extra is I did a mix of aspen bedding and eco earth. You can see I put it a few inches down right there because these snakes do like to burrow. But for a male hog nose specifically, I mean, this is about as easy as it gets. So, like I said, not a hard setup at all. So yeah. Nothing too serious. I mean, nothing that anybody on a moderate budget really can't afford. Um, so, like I said, when it comes to temperament, feeding, and cost, I can't think of many better snakes than the Western Hognose, and I would definitely recommend this to a beginner owner because, like I said, it's pretty ease of care, you know? So, what do you say? Why don't you get a Western Hognose? Get several of them. Why not? No, nah, get one, see how it goes. But... That's all we pretty much have for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to have a different pet on next week, and we will uh, go over that one and talk about why that should be a snake you should get as well, because you never have, well, you can have too many. I'm not going to say that. People can get out of hand, but thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next week. Say bye, Dennis.